Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning. Right now at 5, Kern High School District board members meet to discuss in-person learning. What was said about getting kids back in the classroom? Plus, when sports will be back on the field, coming up. A good exchange of views. That's how Republicans described their meeting with President Biden yesterday, negotiating between their two COVID relief plans. What comes next and when a new stimulus check could land in your bank account. And tens of thousands of eligible Kern County residents are still waiting to get their COVID-19 vaccine. And now plans are in the works to open another mass vaccination site here locally. Today is Tuesday, February 2nd, 2021. Good morning, everyone. It is 5 a.m. Thanks so much for joining us on this Tuesday, the second day of February, also known as Groundhog's Day. Good morning, Maddie. Hey, good morning. Yeah, it is Groundhog's Day, and it certainly doesn't feel like we have any more winter after yesterday with 75 here in the valley and all of that sunshine beautiful. with everything burned off. It was so beautiful. Let's check in with Kevin, though. What does our very own Punxsutawney Kevin think? He's headed our way. Well, I'll tell you, Punxsutawney Phil has spoken, and I won't uh, let the cat out of the bag yet, but I'll just say, yeah, he might be off if uh, yesterday was any indication of uh, what is to come, and it was warm. Uh, here in my uh, weather gauge at my house on the extreme west side, it recorded uh, lower 80s uh, out at Meadows Field. Yes, it was a warm day for all of us with temperatures into the 70s. We didn't break a record, but take a look at the high, as Maddie mentioned, 75 degrees in Bakersfield. The record, 76, and that was set back in 1928, so we got so close to that. Outside right now, you can see 51 degrees in Bakersfield, an east-southeast wind at 3 miles per hour. And as we take a look at the day, we should be looking at mostly sunny conditions. It will be another nice, mild day, and we should be right near 70 degrees. As we take a look at Tehachapi, you can see not even a wind really out that direction. And we've got a temperature of 39, a southeast wind at 7. And as we take a look at the day, we'll start out with maybe a few clouds, but then sunny skies the remainder of the day, and also very nice and mild for you as well with the upper 50s. It's a much different story in the parts of New York City where they are uh, under a very strong storm moving up into the Northeast. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a bit. Back over to you. Thanks, Kev. We begin this morning with education news. Right now, the Kern High School District has no plans to return students to the classroom in keeping with the governor's mandate. The Board of Trustees met last night to discuss this and other issues affecting the district. KHSD says under the governor's current rules, secondary schools cannot open until Kern County is out of the purple tier. You may recall in October and November, only the most vulnerable students were allowed back into high school classrooms. In December, they went back to all distance learning. KHSD says it will continue to work on plans to provide services to their most vulnerable students. A special board meeting will be held later this month to address high school sports. A political cartoon posted by Bakersfield Congressman Kevin McCarthy on his Facebook has landed him in hot water with some political edu or local educators and teachers unions. 17th day Tom Wallace shows us what McCarthy posted and reaction from the local unions. Congressman Kevin McCarthy taking to social media, arguing schools must reopen immediately. In this policy platform he shared last week, the House Minority Leader conveyed three points. First, he says school closures have led to higher than average student failure rates. Second, he argued they've hurt student mental health. And third, McCarthy says closures have negatively impacted student overall well-being, including physical health. His arguments were part of this Facebook post from the congressman's official account. Now seemingly deleted, the post included this political cartoon going after teacher unions. The caption, quote, while students are stuck at home, teacher unions enjoy the good life at their expense. It was incredibly offensive. It was completely disrespectful. And it, it, uh, it showed how out of touch. Um, he is. Jesse Aguilar has taught art at East Bakersfield High School for 24 years. He sits on the executive board of the California Teachers Association, where he represents more than 20,000 educators. The CTA's position is that, that uh, we need to go back to school when it's safe. When it's safe. And that, that, that's the key part that seems to not be connecting with the congressman. 
A safe environment, Aguilar says, can come only when there's a plan in place to vaccinate all educators. He says he agrees with the congressman about the issues that have arisen due to school closures, but adds the situation is not so black and white. I know teachers that have gotten COVID and have tried to teach while having COVID, and I know teachers who have died from COVID. It's not a right or a left thing. It's not a conservative or a liberal thing. It's a health thing. Aton Wallace, 17 News. Yesterday afternoon, Congressman McCarthy issued an apology for the post. It reads in part, parents, teachers, and mentors go to great lengths to keep them, students, safe and to educate and lead them to being good, productive citizens. This pandemic has placed enormous strains on everyone involved in education, especially our teachers who are working harder than ever in different settings at all different times of the day in support of their students. That is why I would like to apologize regarding a recent post of an article and image that many have told me unfairly associated some teachers unions with all of our teachers. I never intended to suggest you aren't working your absolute hardest for our kids. I know you do every day in very difficult circumstances. A California professor and video game designer is the guest today in Bakersfield College's Distinguished Speaker Series. You may not recognize his name, but Gordon Bellamy designed the immensely popular Madden NFL video game and also teaches at USC. He's been a key leader at Electronic Arts, which owns EA Sports and several other video game brands. In 2018, he received a Lifetime Achievement Award at GDC and was featured on Nickelodeon for his 25 years of contributions to the gaming industry and culture. Bellamy will speak today via Zoom at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. You can check out the live stream on the Bakersfield Student Government Association Facebook page. Even with a vaccine, this virus will take time to conquer. That's the title of a recent article written by Dr. Michael Sag from University of Alabama. He will be a guest speaker at, the, at today's Bakersfield College President's Virtual Forum. He will answer COVID-19 questions from students and teachers during the online event. It's this afternoon, starting at 3.30 p.m. It is open to the public, but you have to register beforehand. You can do that on BC's website, bakersfieldcollege.edu. Local law firm Chaincone Styles has introduced a new grant program for local students. The grant, the chats with Chaincone Styles Educational Grants Program aims to give away 10 grants of $500 each to students at any grade level. The funds are meant for students' classrooms needs, such as a computer, textbooks, or even to pay for college application fees. Students must fill out an application and ask attorneys a question about the law, being a lawyer, or anything in the legal field that they may be curious about. For more information on how to apply, just head to our website, kget.com. In your 17 Crime Watch this morning, a teenager is under arrest, accused of sexually assaulting a woman who picked him up following a car crash. The Highway Patrol says the teen crashed a car, later determined to be stolen, on Highway 99 at the I-5 interchange. Bakersfield police say a woman picked him up and he sexually assaulted her during the drive into Bakersfield. The teen was later found at Valley Plaza Mall and arrested. The woman was treated at a hospital. Investigators say there may be more victims and they're searching for the driver of a red SUV. Police are asking for the driver of that SUV to contact them at 327-7111. New this morning, the sheriff's office is investigating a suspicious death out of Fraser Park. KCSO says deputies responded to a home on Lakeview Drive in Fraser Park yesterday for reports of a dead elderly woman. Deputies located the body in the home and say the scene was suspicious in nature. Homicide detectives are investigating. 17 Court Watch now. Second Amendment Sports is being sued for two and a half million dollars for allegedly failing to pay minimum wage and overtime, as well as not allowing rest or meal breaks as required by state law. The lawsuit alleges the gun shop that operated in Bakersfield until its sale in December had the money to pay for those wages but chose not to. It also says the shop violated state labor codes by not allowing a meal break of at least 30 minutes for a work period in excess of five hours or a 10 minute rest break for every four hours worked. Additionally, the lawsuit says Second Amendment Sports did not pay compensation owed to employees who resigned and provided inaccurate wage statements. Attorneys representing the company did not respond to our request for a comment as a news time. A man accused of pointing a replica firearm at a woman and two children as they sat in a car has pleaded no contest. 
23 year old Jordan McLeod was arrested shortly after the December 21st incident where he approached a woman sitting in her car and pointed a fake gun at the two children in the back seat. McLeod pleaded no contest Monday to brandishing the replica firearm and was sentenced to 180 days in jail. Other charges were dismissed, including two counts of willful cruelty to a child. A man has pleaded not guilty to felony sex abuse charges after he allegedly met a teen on a dating app and forced him to commit a sexual act and then filmed it to film the encounter so he could extort the teen. According to court documents, the teen says he met 32-year-old Christopher Hansbro on the dating app Grinder. The teen said Hansbro was abusive and made him perform a sex act, a sex act against his will. The teen also told police that Hansbro recorded the sex act and threatened to post it online to try and force the teen into seeing him again. This isn't Hansbro's first brush with the law. In 2019, he was arrested in a kidnapping and sexual assault case that happened near Valley Plaza Mall in 2013. Welcome back here at 520. Former Seattle Seahawks player Chad Wheeler has pleaded not guilty to charges of domestic violence and resisting arrest. The charges stem from a January incident involving his girlfriend. Prosecutors allege Wheeler viciously attacked his girlfriend in her bedroom, strangling her twice until she lost consciousness. The former offensive lineman is charged with two felonies, first-degree domestic violence assault and domestic violence unlawful imprisonment, as well as misdemeanor resisting arrest. His next court date is a hearing set for February 11th. Three people are dead after the cleanup of a significant snowfall and as it took a tragic and bizarre turn, beginning as an argument over shoveling and ending in a murder-suicide. Officers responded to a reported shooting in the Hudson section of Plains Township around 9.30 in the morning. Neighbors were just getting ready to shovel the snow when they say they heard arguing, followed by about a dozen gunshots. When police arrived at the scene, they found three people dead, according to investigators. Police believe it started as an argument about shoveling snow. One person opened fire, killing two others before going inside the home to turn the gun on himself. The assistant Luzerne County District Attorney says the incident is still under investigation. A personal reveal last night from New York Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Speaking to about 100,000 followers on Instagram Live, the Democratic representative spoke about the January 6th insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. During the conversation, AOC revealed she's the victim of sexual abuse. She said just like abusers, supporters of the insurrection just want to move on from the incident. The reason I'm getting emotional in this moment is because these folks who tell us to move on, that it's not a big deal, that we should forget what's happened, or even telling us to apologize, um, these are the same tactics of abusers. And um, I'm a survivor of sexual assault. AOC went on to reveal that many close friends and family members may not have heard that before. KGET Business Watch is brought to you by Grapevine MSP Technology Services, the Valley's leading IT service provider. Welcome back. So how does someone go from working in corporate America to becoming one of the most creative and well-renowned chocolatiers? Well, it takes a lot of hard work and determination. NBC's Chris Pallone introduces us to a man who did just that, training his job for his passion. After earning a degree in chemistry and then spending a decade in big business, Memphis's Philip Ashley Ricks had an epiphany. Three o'clock in the morning one day, I uh, said I'm going to be a chocolatier for the rest of my life and proceeded to spend the next three years, roughly, give or take, um, teaching myself everything about chocolate. Drawing inspiration from his family, which loved to cook, Philip Ashley Chocolates was born. He quickly gained a reputation for creating beautiful and tasty handcrafted treats, pairing chocolate with unusual ingredients like sweet potato, a tribute to his grandmother. That's literally the first chocolate that I made when I said, you know what, okay, I'm ready to go and do my own thing. Since then, he's won awards and accolades and made chocolate served at star-studded events like the Oscars and Grammys. And while many businesses are struggling during the pandemic, it turns out many people are turning to comfort foods like chocolate to cope during this difficult time. You know, people want something to connect with um, when, when other things are not so um, connected or going well. Now, in time for Valentine's Day, Kentucky's Woodford Reserve Distillery has asked Chef Philip to create chocolates to be paired with its double oaked bourbon. You know, for, for companies like Woodford Reserve to give us a shout and, and work with us, 
uh, in a time like this, it's, it's been huge. So. so Phillip says cooking with chocolate and experimenting with different pairings is a great family activity. After all, it's kept him connected to his. The main thing that I always try to tell people is, is, is be fearless in the kitchen. You know, Chef Philip Ashley Ricks making his dreams come true while providing moments of decadence for the rest of us. Chris Pallone, NBC News. Pretty neat to see. That chocolate looks absolutely fantastic. Hammering out a deal. Today, Washington is still trying to figure out how to get you that stimulus check. And President Biden sat down with Republicans yesterday. And even though they didn't walk out the door with an agreement, both sides say that they are hopeful. Tracy Potts has that story. Alex, good morning. Good morning, everyone. There's a rush to get COVID relief done because extra unemployment runs out at the end of this month. And the Biden and Republican plans are billions of dollars apart. Here's what's on the table. Two plans to help struggling Americans. The new Republican proposal would cost $618 billion, a third of President Biden's plan, with no money for states, local governments, and much less for schools. It includes smaller stimulus checks, $1,000 targeting low-income families, and less unemployment. It makes no sense to pinch pennies when so many Americans are struggling. Republicans called their White House meeting productive and promised to keep talking. It was a very good exchange of views. I wouldn't say that we came together on a package tonight. No one expected that in a two-hour meeting. Democrats have started an effort to push through Biden's plan without Republican votes. Republicans can still vote for that, and there's certainly precedent of that in the past. Both plans include the same amount for more vaccines. When the vaccine becomes available to you, please get vaccinated. But many Americans are having trouble getting an appointment. It's like buying a lottery ticket and, and you just hope that your number will come up. There's new evidence vaccines are working. Nursing home patients were among the first to get shots and new cases there are down in the past month. Also today, President Biden may sign new executive orders on immigration. They've been held up awaiting the confirmation of a new Homeland Security Secretary. That vote is set for today. If confirmed, Alejandro Mayorkas would oversee the new task force to reunite families separated at the border. I'm Tracy Potts, 17 News. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.